Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Marshall, and you may have found the title of this video rather puzzling, but it's actually quite appropriate. You see, there is a serious problem of pollution in Monmouthshire, most crucially in the area bordering Carleon. It's pretty common knowledge that Carleon and the corridor between there and Newport have been well reported in the press as one of the most polluted areas in South Wales and acknowledged as such by the government. But the area in Monmouthshire bordering it also suffers severe and health damaging levels. I'm talking about Langibi Bower. However, this has been and still is being ignored by the authorities and the media. Consequently, the health hazard has remained unseen in both ways, in the media and in physical reality, because particulate matter and volatile organic compound pollution is invisible to the eyes, though not to the lungs. I've talked with many residents of the area and there is a high level of private concern. The area has many new housing estates and many more homes are under construction. These typically tend to be the first homes of young parents just starting their families and it's young children who suffer the effects of pollution most. Health effects that will affect their whole lives because small developing lungs are affected disproportionately. A second group that is disproportionately affected is the old and vulnerable, of which South East Wales has a higher proportion than the rest of the UK. All this is made even worse by the pandemic and is seen in the disproportionate level of coronavirus hospitalisations and deaths in the area. I have campaigned for attention to be paid to this for many years. I've provided evidence of this pollution to the council and to the appropriate bodies who have the power to do something about it, but they have all failed to get a grip of the problem. The response has been that they don't have the data to work on. I have argued that they should, therefore, install the same monitors as have been installed in Carleon and the corridor from there to Newport, but they have failed to do so. So I took the matter into my own hands. I purchased several monitors for use at my own place, which is right at the heart of the area. These are standalone monitors and portable environmental pollution monitors. In consultation with the Environmental Health Department, I collected the data, the lack of which they had hitherto used as the reason to ignore the problem, and I showed the dangerous levels of pollution that pervaded the air residents were, and still are, breathing in. In doing so, I found some surprises. Firstly, it's not only particulate matter pollution, PM 2.5 and PM 10, that is extremely high at various times, but also volatile organic compounds, including formaldehyde. I proved this face to face to their officer using my monitors, which are of reputable brands, including Dyson. Following this, the environmental health officer set about trying to track down the sources of this pollution and visited various industrial sites, but concluded that the investigations were inconclusive and that they did not know what to do about it. The eventual response was to sweep it under the carpet as a problem too difficult to solve. Another most interesting thing my data showed was that pollution peaked at certain times. The rush hour periods were, as you would expect, included in these, but what was most surprising was that peaks much higher than these were reached on certain weekdays in the very late evening and up to around two o'clock in the morning, at which time they tend to abruptly stop. This is suggestive of a factory process discharging pollution when they feel it will not be noticed. Conscious minds may not notice, but sleeping lungs do. People breathe heavily in sleep and very often through their mouths rather than their noses. Have you noticed how you sometimes wake up feeling unexplainably groggy with a headache, stuffy nose and coughing? These are the short-term effects 
the long-term ones will not be felt until later in life. A similar situation occurs at weekends when environmental officers are not expected to be working. I demonstrated this, but, again, the authorities responded by scratching their heads about what to do and eventually resorted to sweeping it under the carpet. In effect, this is giving the polluters a license to kill. Now I do have ideas about how to resolve this. There is no reason to conclude action with head scratching. If you have looked at my videos and talks over the past two years, which I know many of you have, you will know that there is no poverty of ideas on my part. These videos are available on YouTube, the URL of which is YouTube forward slash and Teleki channel forward slash Dr. Peter Marshall. So what can be done? Well, firstly, as I pointed out to the Environmental Health Department in Public Health Wales many times, install monitors in the area, just like those that have been installed in neighbouring Carleon, so that they have the continuous data. Secondly, I would argue that they should not just pay lip service to being led by the data, but actually act on it and set about seriously tracking down the sources. It's all very well visiting industrial sites during office hours when, as I demonstrated, the peaks do not tend to occur. It's necessary to track down the sources at the times when they are peaking, which is outside normal working hours. At such times, the readings on good portable monitors will rise continuously as the user approaches the source. The polluters should then be compelled by force of law to change their industrial processes so that they cease to pollute and damage people's health. In other words, end their license to kill. Remember, respiratory damage is not something temporary. Once damaged, the lungs remain damaged and get worse over time. In addition, dangerous chemicals like formaldehyde and other VOCs cause cancer and other fatal diseases and also developmental problems. I'm Dr. Peter Marshall and you can see all my works via my website drpetermarshall.com and you can also access my many articles and advices by joining me on LinkedIn, the URL of which is LinkedIn forward slash in forward slash Dr. Peter Marshall and on Facebook, the URL of which is Facebook forward slash Dr. Peter Marshall 35. Oh, and one last thing. If you found this video helpful, I hope you will subscribe to the channel by pressing the subscribe button. Subscription is free.